Hi, good afternoon. My name's Emma Last and I'm from Progressive Minds. And um, this uh, is number six in uh, my inspira inspirational stories, um, all, all about helping us to talk um, for Mental Health Awareness Week. And today I am joined by the very lovely Emma Hammond. Um, and I can't wait to hear this story. <laughs> so shall we start? So, um, Emma, please, could you tell us about your mental health journey? Yeah, I think I've um, always struggled with mental health problems. I think even even from a young age and when I was in school, I went through bullying in high school. Yeah. Always felt different from everybody. Never felt like I fit in. Um, I was always trying to be something that I wasn't. I didn't feel part of society. I didn't. I just I just felt a bit odd to be fair like my whole life growing up I was like there can't possibly any be anyone else out there that feels the same way as me I yeah. felt like I, like in my own little Emma bubble you know and like no one else I couldn't touch anyone else I couldn't see anyone else I had no idea how to kind of fit in with like that crowd or people that was so that left me feeling very disconnected and yeah. I struggled with anxiety and depression pretty much all the way through growing up. Was in and out of some very unhealthy and toxic relationships yeah. throughout. Yeah, well, up until recently, pretty much for about a good, like, you know, 20, 25 years, I was <laughs> in unhealthy relationships um, because I was really, really insecure. Never felt like I was good enough. And I felt like I needed validation yeah. from other people. Um, I got to a point in my life, and this was about so this was about six years ago now, um, where I just kind of plodded along. I used to go out, I used to party, get drunk every single weekend, work Monday to Friday, do my job. Um, I had my boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, whatever relationship I was in at the time. And had everything that I should have wanted. I had a great job. I was registered to do a law degree. I had a two-bedroom house. I owned everything in it. I had my car and, you know, and I just sat, I sat in my bed. Sat on my bed one day, like, crying my eyes out, thinking, I don't want to be here anymore. And I took, I took a load of painkillers. And I just, it got to that point where everything was just so dark. I was just in yeah. so much pain. And yeah. I didn't I didn't know how to get through it. I didn't know how to get past it. All I could see was dark. That there was yeah. light. There was there was no light there. And I'd had a an argument with my boyfriend at the time. He was a quite emotionally in an abusive relationship, so I was quite vulnerable. Yeah. I sat there on my bed thinking, I don't want to be here anymore. So I ended up taking a load of painkillers. I don't think it was to try and kill myself. I think even yeah. looking back now never actually wanted to commit suicide yeah. it was just kind of whatever I just want the pain to stop I just want it yeah. to go away I just needed yeah. to do something um so yeah I did that ended up in hospital had my stomach pumped and that kind of stopped but that was a kind of a bit of a wake-up call I think as well yeah. I yeah. realized at that point that actually I had the power to change things if I wasn't yeah. happy I didn't like the way that my life was going that I actually the power was with me and I yeah. could not in that relationship yeah. I could you know do I could take my life in whichever path that I wanted to and only um about a couple of months after that yeah I just uh, decided that that's it was going to make a change it was going to transform my life and I sold everything that I owned everything in my two-bedroom house I sold my car handed my notice in at my job told all my family and my friends that I was going, packed up everything, and I only had one suitcase left of stuff, and then I moved over <laughs> to Jersey. I literally, like, flew over, like, two weeks later, and then just, like, started a brand new life. And um, it's still still been pretty up and down since I moved here, but it was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. You know, just, like, taking the leap, pushing myself out of my comfort zone and doing yeah. something completely different from what I'd ever done and that started me on my journey of having my baby and then starting my business up over here and um, now I run a global digital marketing agency and at one point <laughs> I couldn't even, like speak to anyone on the phone or leave my house so pretty amazing yeah so um what's helped you the most 
in terms of kind of picking myself back up again and like getting myself into a good headspace I mean I think um getting outside like when I connect with nature that really yeah. really helps my mind connecting with nature the more that I stay at home the more I feel sorry for myself and the more yeah. I stop being up you know old thoughts um old things that have happened in the past and I just get I kind of get into victim mode yeah um, when I stay indoors so having some kind of routine where I get up at a certain amount of time but not beating myself up again if I don't get up at the time that I'm supposed to get up you've got to learn to yep. be gentle with yourself I think yep. but yep forcing myself to actually go out when I'm anxious when I don't feel like I want to leave the house and to actually forcing myself to go out and take a walk on the beach or go on walk around um in the fields or you know just getting outside and connecting with nature I take my classical music on because classical music calms me even though yeah. I don't normally listen to that I've got quite loads of different varieties of music but classical is my go-to when I'm feeling anxious so yeah. I stick on my earphones, put my classical music on, and I just like walk like for like an hour or something, yeah. and then just and then go and touch lots of trees and hug trees and walk around with my my with my shoes off. Can I know what sometimes <laughs> sometimes when I'm uh, talking to people about well being and connecting with nature and really tapping into their senses and about what their body needs, sometimes I'll say to them, you know, when you're out, just go and touch a tree, and they're like, what? <laughs> no it's just about trying to kind of take yourself out of that you know rep that repetition of life and and that trying to just just simplify everything and and really get back to you know really get back to the basics that basic things that you know the way we were created really in terms of our senses so Yes, Get it makes sense to me, but it might not make sense to other people, Emma. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Getting away from technology as well, like yeah. switching your laptop off and everything. Cause especially if especially if you're an entrepreneur and, or you've got some kind of business where you're working on your computer or something, make yeah. sure that you're actually in time to switch everything off completely and then yeah. just get outside and with, with no distractions. Yeah. Don't look at your phone. Don't check your Facebook notifications. Just, <laughs> just go. Um, so, obviously, we're uh, in very strange and unprecedented times. Um, do you have one tip for anyone struggling in the current crisis? Speak, Speak to other people. Yeah. yeah, really, that's been, like, I know uh, that we're, feel really disconnected from everyone at the moment um but for me just talking to people online picking the phone up and actually having a conversation with people and yeah. then scheduling just random like facetime or zoom chats or whatever yeah. with, with family and yeah. like nothing like businessy stuff like me and my family do a group call every thursday evening we've been doing the virtual pub quiz so oh, he does streams he does it live on youtube doesn't he so there's like five different households of like my sister and her family, my brother, um, my stepsister and my dad who are like in Jersey. And we all do a group call every Thursday night and then check in and, you know, have a little bit of fun. So scheduling and things like that is really, yeah. really important. Something to look forward to, isn't it? When we can't plan as much as we're used to planning. Um, well, having like, uh, you know, planning in like girly date nights where you're like going to FaceTime your best mates and just get a, you know, have a glass of wine, just one glass yeah. of wine. If there's any more than yeah. that, it's probably not good for your mental health. <laughs> or, <laughs> some <hot chocolate. laughs> or some herbal tea. Uh, <laughs> and just have a chat, you know. Everything in moderation. Yes. <laughs> um. So the theme of Mental Health Week is kindness. How has giving or kindness helped you? It helps. Definitely giving to other people. That's really what my business is about as well. So I'm quite, I'm quite visible online and I give a lot of yeah. things for free. I, get, uh, I share a lot of my experiences. I yeah. give a lot of my advice. I give a lot of my tips. 
and I don't do it for any other reason other than I know what I've been through can actually yeah. help other people. So the fact that I can, you know, help someone transform their day or even just a little bit, you know, if they're having a really tough day and they see one of my pieces of content or one of my videos or something and I get a message saying, oh, you really made me laugh or you yeah. made me smile or, you know, something like that. It absolutely... I don't know I just get really warm-hearted and it feels incredible that yeah. I've been able to give something to someone without wanting anything in return yeah yeah and uh, it, does, it really gives you that boost yeah definitely and then you think that that's a reason enough to keep on doing it because yeah. it's like it's like a butterfly effect it's like the more people that you can impact the more they impact other people and you know you yeah. end up creating creating like this ripple effect on on the, yeah. on the planet i think i'm one of these type of people that wants to save the world and so it's quite, <laughs> quite important to me so save the world in in terms of um keeping people safe uh saying by uh, time saving and automation is that yes. is that um but you've also yeah. um recently been part of um a collaboration for a book as well haven't you I have. It was an incredible experience. It was there was twelve of us, twelve women, and we're all entrepreneurs, and we've all struggled with adversity or mental health issues or yeah. you know some, some kind of problem in life that we've had to face. And we just all told our personal stories of how we've you know transformed things around. And yeah, it was um, insane. It got to number one. We got number one bestseller in like thirty different categories in the UK and the USA. Yeah. And, it was 24 hours that was really exciting and um yeah all, all the profits for that went to mind so they're all going to mind the mental health charity as well which obviously means a lot to you so that's that's really it's great that it's been so such a massive success already so um emma is there anything else that you feel is that you'd like to share in terms of you know with it being kind of mental health week or anything that you think would help anyone that might be considering um, that they might need to change their life right now? Just speak to somebody. There is always someone that understands what you're going through. And yeah. th this is the thing. We think that no one, no one else can possibly understand what we're going through. But actually, I think a lot more people suffer from mental health issues than even the statistics show. Yeah, you know, I'd be like pretty certain that 70 or 80 percent of, you know, people out there have suffered from something, some kind of issue or some problem at their life. So everyone does understand or, you know, there will be people that understand what you're going through. So reach out to someone, whether it's somebody online and be direct about what you're asking for as well. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know how to communicate. You know, you can get quite um, you push people away. I think I used to do this one as well. I used to push people away or ignore people. It's like just be open and honest about what you need with other yeah. people. And just find a way to communicate it effectively without kind of snapping at people or pushing them away. Because yeah. this is one thing that I always used to do. You know, I always just would shout at people <laughs> when I wasn't, you know, dealing very well with my head. And of course, that pushed everybody away instead yeah. of saying, hey, I need a friend right now. I need some yeah. support Googling. yeah um, so communicate with people be open and honest about it without kind of trying to let your emotions get the better of you and without pushing everyone away and um yeah speak speak about it more because the more you talk about it the easier it gets even if <laughs> the, the person on the other line doesn't even know what to say to you that you know they can't even give you any advice but just talking about it is going to help sometimes um, just Sometimes getting everything out of your head, out of your head, whether that be um, writing everything down or talking things through, you know, actually just getting it out of your brain means that yeah. you're kind of removing it from that space. So then you can start to kind of sort it out mm -hmm. into what bits can I actually, you know, affect myself um, and, and try and, and brings more rational thoughts, let's say more logical thoughts about yeah. how you can how you can move forward um yeah so 
yeah so yes yeah, so key tips are reach out for help and get out there in the uh, out there with nature so key themes yeah. from yours then emma we're all, we are allowed to do now we're allowed to go outside again <laughs> we are and more than once a, more than once a day so that's good yeah I think it does make you realise how much, if you do kind of walk every day or go out every day, you know, mm. not being, uh, or even if you do it twice a day, not being able to do that or it being limited to an hour, um, it does, it can, you know, it does make you think, doesn't it? It, it does affect your the, your thought process in terms of, you know, freedom, you know, thinking, you know, in terms of your, you know, your the freedom, freedom of mind and freedom, freedom of thought and. Yeah, it can it can it can make you feel quite trapped quite quickly. And yeah. I think quite a lot of people have, have felt like that. So, um, yeah, as much as it's big steps going out there and being careful, um, it's it's wonderful that we can we can uh, spend more time outside. So, thank you so much, Emma, um, for joining me today. And um, if we can just help one person through this, um, you know that that would be. That that's me on my on my way to my mission. Amazing. Oh, thanks very much, Emma. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.